Hey, Steve Mignogna here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Mass, doing another High Octane walk around with a 1976 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. Now, you know, the Trans Am arrived in 1969, one year on that first gen family of Firebirds, but from 1970 through 1981, the Trans Am really was one of America's most sought after cars. You know, even the horsepower kind of declined after 1973-74, the sales of these things exploded. The crazy thing is the OPEC oil crisis, the environmental movement, all these things kicked in and kind of killed the muscle car movement in 1971-23. But after 74-56, everybody decided we want muscle cars again. And the crazy thing is the Trans Am, you might say, was the last man standing. For 1975 and 76, Camaro actually dropped the Z28. After 1974, Barracuda and Challenger were gone. Javelin, gone. So Trans Am kind of stood alone in the pony car segment and boy did they make money doing it. Now, in 1976, there were a total of 110,775 Firebirds built, right? You think Trans Ams might have been one in a hundred, kind of rare, right? No, 46,704 Trans Ams were built, like almost one in two Trans Ams was a, or Firebirds was a Trans Am, so the Trans Am was a big deal. Now, something I always love about Trans Ams is the standard hood scoop right here, and of course, the rising Phoenix, don't call it the screen chicken, I won't if you won't, but again, Phoenix rising, that's the, the, the uh, effect here. And this could be deleted if you didn't want to have the uh, ostentatious cop baiting graphic, you didn't have to have it, but everybody did. But one thing about 1976 was the final year for round headlights, the uh, Pontiac show car Banshee inspired rectangles would arrive in 77. You choose which one you like better, but again, 76 final year for the round lights. And the hood scoop itself was also in its final year in 76 as a round top, round face design. It became flatter and, and sort of peaked in 1977 with the redesign. And on this one here, we see 455. We'll get to that in a second. Of course, 76 final year for the big 455. But at the back of that scoop, notice how this one has a grating that's been installed. You gotta remember, 1973 and four, the Super Duty 455s were the last functional scoops, and even those had a plate you had to remove. So these were actually had a, a block off plate, but you could easily remove it. 1977, the redesigned scoop was sealed shut, didn't do anything except sell cars. But other details on Trans Am and unique to them were the front fender air extractors. And what these did was allow under car air to escape at speed to prevent front end rise. That was absolutely very real. They worked. And of course, the fairings in front of the wheels were also Trans Am specific and that mighty duck tail spoiler, also a Trans Am feature, which could actually be purchased toward the end on lesser Firebird Esprits for a few bucks. But again, at this point in time, it was specifically seen on Trans Am. And uh, you gotta love the exhaust splitters right here. These were also an optional feature on Trans Am. They go all the way back to the 64 GTO, where the twin pipes on each side were a GTO thing through the 60s, and of course, were added to the Trans Am, going back to the wishing well, if you will. Now, this one's been lightly modified in good ways. 17-inch aluminum honeycomb wheels, I think from year one, modern rubber, good to see that disc brakes in the back. And yes, you could get disc brakes in the back of your Trans Am in 79, 80, 81, but not in 76, but it's all good to add them here. Okay, we've seen the outside of this car. Now let's look under the hood. And under that iconic hood, one of the beauties of the shaker hood, if you didn't know, you probably do, but if you didn't, when you lift the hood, the shaker stays on the engine. And they call it the shaker, of course, because with the engine, the hood scoop wiggles and jiggles. Very cool party trick, first seen in 69 on the Ford Mustang Mach 1, but again, utilized by Trans Am from 70 all the way through 1979, 80, 81, the shaker. Now this one here is a 455, which is the Pontiac big engine, and it didn't get any bigger than this, really. Uh, Pontiac would make the 428, the 421, the 389, the 400, but the 455 was the big dog, the biggest of them all. This one has been fortified with a serpentine drive up front, billet aluminum, retains the belts much better than a V-belt would, aluminum water pump right there, an Edelbrock item, and under the 
air cleaner is a Rochester Quadrajet, which is the correct carburetor. The beauty of those, that's 800 CFM. You can cruise around on the primaries and then uh, get fuel economy, or wide open, you've got those massive secondaries, and again, 800 CFM to feed that 455. And hiding in plain sight, an aluminum Edelbrock intake, again, painted that beautiful metallic Pontiac blue. Now this car is a real Trans Am. We know that because the VIN has a W87 right there. W87, that means Pontiac Trans Am. And again, there were 46,704 of these. And of course, Z in the fifth spot tells us it was born of 400. If we had a W, that would be a factory 455, but that's fine. Upgrades are the name of the game with Trans Ams, making a good thing even better. Let's look inside. And in the theme of making a good thing better, this has a manual transmission, but instead of the four speed, this would have been equipped with from the factory. This is a five speed, which of course gives us a nice overdrive fifth gear for easy highway cruising and a nice low first gear for even better launch pad uh, acceleration. This one has the Trans Am formula type steering wheel, a very exotic piece, again, a Trans Am hallmark. And again, the radial tuned suspension and engine turned applique on the dash, all the stuff you're seeing on Trans Am. And look at this here, the speedometer goes to 100 miles an hour. You gotta remember, this is a 1976. And in 1974, uh, Richard Nixon, President Richard Nixon, actually mandated a 55 mile per hour speed limit for all state roads and federal roads. So crazy but true, the 55 mile an hour speed limit was 74 through 86, 87, long time. So to reflect the fact that you don't need a 140 mile an hour speedometer because you're not gonna triple the speed limit, hopefully, Pontiac reduced the speedometer to 100 to hopefully keep your lead foot in check. Nobody paid attention, but it was a good way for a lot of states to make a little bit of money giving tickets out in those 55 mile per hour dark days of the past, how far we've come. All right, so the five-speed manual's here. This one has the tilt steering column, kind of a cool detail right up there. And um, just nicely fitted inside center console, bucket seats, high backs, and just the perfect a complement to the beautiful outside styling. But these are also functional cars, which leads us to the trunk. Now it is hard to imagine that GM came that close to canceling the Firebird and Camaro in 1973-74. And with sales of these things exploding and hitting, I think, 100,000 Trans Ams by 78-79, you can bet that GM's glad they didn't drop the F-body. Now these were called pony cars, which usually meant a small trunk. Well, let's take a look and see. It's not that bad, you know? I mean, there's a, a hump here for the gas tank to live under, but you could certainly get a couple of suitcases in here for you know a weekend or a week-long trip, no problem at all. This one does have the optional uh, trunk lamp. This cable here goes to the light, which helps you to see what you're doing at night when you're loading or unloading your uh, suitcases. And something interesting, too, to help save space in the trunk is this, the safe the Space Saver Tire. It's a mini donut tire, and the point here, it's an F7814. You would inflate this with this tire inflator, which came in the trunk. You can see right here, it's designed for the F7814. It's matched to the tire in this car. And again, you just sort of uh, put this onto the Schrader valve, inflate that, and then drive at 50 miles an hour or below to the nearest tire repair station to get your actual tire repaired. So again, the Space Saver Spare arrived in the mid 70s as a way to get a little more of trunk volume in almost every car, and they weighed less, which helped fuel economy. So again, the Pontiac Trans Am was the last man standing. This and the Corvette were kind of as good as it got in high performance General Motors vehicles in the late 1970s, and man, these things sold. Like I say, there were 47,000 of these sold in 1976 alone. Sales would double to 100 plus thousand by 78, 79. So thankfully, General Motors never discontinued the Firebird or the Camaro. In fact, the Camaro Z28 came back into the scene in 77 when they realized that Trans Am sales were going through the roof. Chevy wanted a piece of that. But again, the Z28 only had a 350, not a 400 or a 403 as these did when 77 forward. But that's the story of how the Pontiac Trans Am was kind of the last muscle car standing, led the way for the Gen 3 and Gen 4 Firebirds and Camaros, which uh, would also become legends in their own right. To learn more about this particular car, check it out on the High Octane Classics website.